So I'm going to posterize this. Um, the method I'm using is one of several ways to do things in Photoshop, but I thought that is probably the easiest thing to put it in um, sort of uh, steps, one, two, three, four steps. So I'm going to create um, several layers of the same image. So right click, duplicate, and duplicate again. I'm going to select two and duplicate them. And another duplicate. So I've got now one, two, three, four, five, six, and the original image. I'm going to turn all of the images off apart from one, which is the one I'm going to work on. So the first image is going to be the, um, the background. I want to have a background which is the corners around her hair. So what I do is go to image, adjustment and threshold. And I'll choose a setting where I can only see a silhouette uh, of the corners. Um, that is the background image. I'm going to then go to select a color range. I'm going to pick up the white and give it a color, let's say, of a greeny color. So we've got the four corners or three corners and the side. Um, I'm going to turn this off. Oh, before I do, I'll invert my setting, my uh, selection, and delete the black. And also delete the white a bit of the hair I've got there. So I'm going to delete that. Um, so there's nothing but the green. So I can now turn this off, go to the next one, do exactly the same image adjustments and threshold. Now I'll try and get the extreme whites in the picture. So we're doing the slider here. I'll probably go to around 200. Yeah, I mean, the bit about her hair, her fore uh, for, forehead, uh, the shadows, uh, well, the highlights on her eyes and a bit of the teeth. Okay, let's say 201. Yeah, that's good. And I'll do exactly the same as I did. This is the whole idea. I'm going to repeat this five or six times, and then we'll have an image broken down into four or five tones. Um, when I do the sliders, I want to pick up the features that, so in this case, I wanted whites to use a, a light color veneer. So again, I'll go to select, color range, I'll pick up the, the white, I'll invert the selection and delete the black. And I've got now the highlights. If I turn the other one on, so we've got now the corners and the highlights. Turn this off and do the next one. Uh, exactly the same, image adjustment threshold. And I think, um, Yeah, some some grays. Yeah, may I ask a question? Yes. The do you need to delete all those little dots, black dots? Uh, yeah, yeah, that I'm 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 coming to that a bit later. Okay. Uh, this is purely to break the image into tones. Okay. So this this one will be the light grays. Um, and when I'm doing, moving the 
moving the, the slider, I'm imagining what the shapes will be like. And I try and get something that's representative. So I think 180 something is good. Do exactly the same. Select a color range, pick up the white and OK. And now I'm going to color this white into a light gray because this is going to be my light gray layer. So I'll pick up a light gray from here and go to brush. Um, so we've got a gray. I'll invert the selection and delete the black. So I've got now a white, a background, and a light gray. And I progress like that. So go to the next one, choose some me middle, middle grays. So image adjustment threshold, and I'll choose, yeah, probably something like this. Yeah, repeat, repeat exactly the same, the same thing. So go to select color, pick up the white, okay. And I'm going to choose a darker gray. So you pick up this one and that's the gray. Invert the selection, delete the blacks. If I just do see what the gray is, yeah, yeah. So there's a light gray, a medium gray. Um, and I'm going to delete the selection, go to the next image. Uh, exactly the same adjustment um, threshold. I'll pick up 128 is good. It's we're beginning to get now the blacks only. There's one more step. So 128 is good. Again, repeat the process. Uh, select color range white. Okay, and I'll pick up a darker gray. Um, invert the selection, delete the black. At this point, I can start to do a bit of tidying up if I want to, but I, I'd rather leave that to the end, but I'll just show you. So these white spots here, which are selected, I'll just try and brush them over. Uh, Things like that, pieces you can't cut. Just take them out at this point. Although we can take them out later in Carl's Draw. So that's the gray. I've got one more layer to do. So I'll turn this off and I'll go to the last one. And again, and the beauty of this is just you repeat the same thing over, over and over. So even a novice who hasn't used Photoshop can memorize the three things I'm doing. And you don't need to learn Photoshop, just do this and you'll end up with an image. So again, adjustments, threshold, and I'll go to the blacks now. Let's say, yeah, I think that's good. Okay. This is slightly different because now I want these blacks because they will form the blacks of the picture and the whites are going to be the very dark grays. So before I, um, before I uh, start to color the gray, I'll just start to delete some of these. So I'll pick up uh, the white and put a brush and tidy up. Uh, like I said, you can do that later. But I just want to show you that you can make your life easier. If I can then pick up a black and go and uh, do this. Oh, black. Um, black and 
to rush. See, I'm tidying up. Okay. Uh, the white is going to be the darkest gray. So now I will go again and select color range, pick up the white, and I'll select a dark, very dark gray. And um, that's a bit too dark, I think. I'll just something slightly even lighter. Yeah, yeah, bigger brush. Okay, delete the selection. And we've done now all the work we need to do to posterize the image. So all I'm going to do is to switch on the layers that I created. And here is a, a green, white, two, three, four, five, six, six tone picture. And that's it. So we've got now a posterized image, which we need to um, copy to Coral Draw to start to vectorize it. So what I do, instead of dealing with five layers, I'll select all the layers, um, duplicate them, so I'm going to have another six layers on top. Then I'll merge these. And that is a picture. If I turn these off now, I've got the picture. So that's the picture I'm going to move to Coral Draw. And but, uh, Leo, the, the edges are very... Um, they're not smooth. So how, how do we eventually smooth? Yeah, we do that in Coral Draw. Uh, okay. After we, after we vectorize it, we use the smoothing, um, a function in Coral Draw. And it, it, it just, you can then, um, basically you're deleting, uh, nods or nodes from the picture. So let me, Go to Coral Draw, I'll copy this image and copy and I'll open a Coral Draw and you, um, let, let's just take a new page. All right, so Coral Draw, um, paste. That's my image. Um, we, still see, we still see Photoshop, Leo. Sorry? We're still seeing your Photoshop. Uh, oh, sorry. you have to sorry. switch. Sorry, away. let me just, uh, how do I change that? Uh, change Coral Draw. Can you see this? No. Uh, yep. Yeah? Yeah. Yep, it's there right. now. Right. Right. Well, we are in Coral Draw now. So I've got the picture in Coral Draw. So what I need to do here is, first of all, um, I've got the guidelines of the grays, which are going to guide the tracing function. Uh, this is a bitmap. So we go to uh, bitmap, convert it to bitmap, and I want, yeah, RGB is good. It's got some green, and I'm going to outline trace it, and I'll use the setting for detail logo. It wants to reduce it because it's too big. It's got too much detail. I'm happy with that. We won't see any difference. So uh, now Coral Draw is going to try to do its best to create vectors. It's created vectors now, but instead of having six colors, we've got 31 colors, which we don't want because we're going to have same toned um, objects or artifacts with different shades. So we can either limit the number or we can merge these. So I'm going to start by collecting the whites. White, 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 and merge. And we're down to 26. Um, 
pick up the light grays, light, 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 merge down to 20. Let me pick up the um, pick up the blacks. So I'll pick up black, 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 and merge. And I've got now just the dark grays and the green. So I'm gonna pick up this, 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 and this, merge. And we ended up with six colors and the green. So now we have a, an image made up, made up of six shades, uh, but we seem to have lost the black. So if we go to set, if we go to setting, if we change the detail slider, we will see things start to appear. So now it has recognized that I want the black. Uh, it's removed the background, so I'll change that to none. So we've got the white of the hair, um, and but it's probably added, yeah, the colors are okay, seven colors. If I say okay now, ah, best thing to do is to group the objects by color. So all the grays, the light grays would be in one in one group, the dark gray in one group, blah, 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 blacks and so on. So say, okay, it's going to, now it's created the image. That is the bitmap. This is the vector. I can turn the fill off, add a border. That's, these are the pieces, but Vincent wanted to know how to smooth these uh, these layers. So I'll go object, group, and ungroup them to pick up each color at, on its own. So I'll pick up, let's say, this one, which I think is this. I'll drag it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to smooth these jagged edges. Uh, if we look at it in this view, um sorry <laughs> Check group, um, select. Um, select and the object group ungroup all now i can pick up any all these curves are the light gray so i pick up this one and just to show you it's going to be a mess of, of little nods or nodes which form this jagged edge. Um, so to get rid of that, uh, you simply switch to this tool, the smoothing tool. Um, it's going to take some time. Right? I mean, I would allow an hour to do all the picture, but in the end, I'll just show you what's gonna happen. So I haven't pressed my mouse button yet, but I can change the size of the nib. If I click the mouse, can we see how it's smoothing? Is that clear? Can you see it? Yes. <clears throat> So there isn't a way to automatically well, smooth everything out? Um, I wouldn't do that because I want the picture to look like this. Yeah. If I am going to ask the software to do something, it might not be what I want. I want this to be uh, the borders of my light gray. So you do it. Um, the way I look at it, is you're going to need time to produce a picture. Either you draw it by hand, you use it by computer, or you do whatever you want. But to get the image you want, you need to spend some time. And I'm quite happy doing this because it's refining it to the degree that I want. I mean, I can change how harsh it, it refines. So if I 
drive this here, it's going to be more gentle. So I'm going to need many more ta passes. But if I go here, 100, it's, you can see the blue line in the background. As you hover the mouse, it's deleting the points that cause the jaggedness. And you can just go over it again and again and be smoother and again and again. So you decide, the, because these are the pieces that you're going to cut. So I do that with all the colors and I'll end up with, so if I drag this out, this piece. So that part is definitely cuttable and that's good enough, I think, for, for marketry, if I carry on doing everything. So you do, <laughs> you do each layer at, uh, on his own and uh, superimpose them again on top of each other. And you should get something that's very near this, but without the freckles and without the, the, without the noise. So, um, yeah, this is my method. Okay, great. So the, uh, you actually, you can hand trace over the posterization results you as can. well. You, if you yeah, want you to be very smooth, you can do that by tracing it. Yeah. But yeah. The I can be, yeah. But the, the point is, I need to split it in Photoshop into tones, and then I can do what I want. So, but here in this case, I'm just, I'm just uh, using the smooth tool in Corel Draw to tidy it up. But yes, like you said, you can pick up a line and uh, start to draw over it. Uh, oops. You know, draw it by hand. Uh, so yeah, uh, there's more than one way to skin a cat. So uh, yeah, this is what I wanted to demonstrate. Now, compared to this uh, technique, uh, we have uh, in our group user who who have used uh, Paint by Numbers uh, software, which is a free, I think it's online application that you can actually use. Yeah. Compared to that, it's a lot quicker. Um, I'm wondering if you, if someone, someone can comment on the quality and the flexibility between this technique and the uh, the other one that you've used, the paint by numbers. Yeah, I I try to do my work within my within the tools that I have. I mean, you're going to buy another piece of software and then something else and something else, and at the end. Uh, I look at it purely like you have a scalpel and some veneer and a bit of skills and you do you do apply your skills to get what you want. But yes, you can use the the main thing is to split it into tones. And the technique I showed allows you, I mean, I split it into six grays. You have no limit. You can split it into as many as you want. Instead of using grays, you can use colors. So, yes. uh, to, the, the to paint, Leo, the paint by number is actually a free uh, software yeah. that uh, some of us use. I think Milton used it. Mark uh, Stuck used it. Uh, who else used it? Yeah, and, and I'm just wondering where, whether or not uh, this uh, technique that Leo present gives you more flexibility, because. Um, that's, that is, is, is something that you want, more flexibility into what you're doing compared to uh, paint my number. Any, 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 any thought on that? Yeah, well, the, the idea of going, going to the thresholds and deciding on a value gives you an idea what the picture is going to look like. And for instance, this picture, one important thing is uh, to get the mole here, you want to get the teeth white there. I haven't, I haven't done them white yet, but you can do that, the eyes. So there are certain features that make this an instantly recognizable picture as opposed to something that the software has interpreted. It's my decision to, to have the gray go here rather than here. 
and that's what I like about it. Leon, Leon let's 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 ask Milne. Milne, uh, you've used it before, right? Paint by number. Now, if if you compare that to this technique, uh, can you give give us some some idea of of what paint by number uh, algorithm does? Does it uh, look at the, uh, the the shading and and create uh, various shading like this, or is it different? Yes, you can tell in the numbers that uh, the number of colors that you want to, and it gives you a palette. Uh, S B U uh, F B U, and uh -huh. it gives you uh, and it has a uh, little it has numbers that you can change to get what you want, but it still comes with a lot of nodes. Uh, okay. Uh, so it's different because you can shape everything, you, the colors that you need to get out of the uh, palette. You can tell it that. But uh, the question I have with Leo, this uh, the uh, vectors that you're working on, you smoothing them out. Uh, is is this all the vectors at one time that you smoothing out, or just one? No, I think, yeah, I take I take each color on its own, each, each tone and deal with it because uh, you've got to look at it like this these are stacked on top of each other and the border between them the okay. one edge is let's let's say the light gray the other side is the dark gray so if you change the shape of the light gray you might expose some white underneath it mm -hmm. so you do you start with like i said start with with the white, do the white, and go down with the colors until you do the blacks. I mean, I can do the blacks here, uh, and uh, just you—you you then can can cut each um, color from the one. Uh, cut the let the top layer cut the lower layer, right. and you'll get an exact match. So the border is exactly going between the light gray and the dark gray because if i'm going to move if i say uh let's let me delete this i'll show you what i mean i'll delete this oops no i don't want to delete it i want to i want to go back just go back to the colored version of it i'm just going Control Z, Control Z. Okay, so that's the colored version. Uh, if I break this picture, uh, group, ungroup it all, I'm going to start to mess about with this border here. Just to show you what's going to happen if I smooth it and how you need to do it systematically, starting white, light gray, dark gray, blah, blah, blah. So if I then go to to the smoothing tool, uh, let me select the light gray. Um, have I selected it? Yes, so light gray. And I'm going to start to play with the edge here between the dark and the light gray. So go here. Now, can you see a white line developing? Mm -hmm. Because the light gray has receded from the from the uh, um, from the layer it it was on. It's now less, and so on. But if you do it systematically, treat it each layer, uh, take each color and do work on each color, you'll you'll get a perfectly fitting piece for the white for the gray, for the black, and so on, so on. So if I want, for instance, to mess about with the uh, eye here, um, and is that is that coming clear to see, to show you what's happening? So now we see, because the eye black has receded and it's exposing some white from the background 
So how do so you deal with that? Well, because you, you start layer by layer, you allow each lower layer to be to include more than the layer above it and then this layer so then i go uh, yeah you want to make sure the top layer overlap yes. the bottom layer correct and then cut expose the emptiness cut cut the bottom bottom layer with the top layer so if that i is into the... that may have to be some hand um hand drawn or moving the shape so that they cover the the holes the, the, no, the because, holes. because i'm going to go on the gray and do the same thing on the gray and the gray will start to smooth out and you see the gray is yeah it's filling yeah. Uh, if i go back to the black it just okay. fills the white so now the black and the gray and if i do trim so that's now the gray layer has been trimmed so this matches this can you control z go back you still yeah. have those white white uh empty yeah uh, it, this is i mean it needs uh, that's it, a sneaker <laughs> uh, so if you go here you're picking on the gray if you do this just as an example and then pick up the black and pick up the gray it's going to cut the gray to match the black when it finishes see so now this this contour matches this contour exactly. Uh, Leo, wouldn't it be faster just draw, just draw the hand draw this because it looked like more work doing that. It's it's personal preference. I think everybody wants to do things they're comfortable with. I I, I totally agree that uh, this is probably not the fastest method, but. This is something I'm happy with, and I something I uh, find I've got control. And I, to be honest, I don't like to draw by hand unless I have a touch screen. Um, this is my workstation, and I need to draw with a mouse, and I don't like that. Um, by the time you uh, change the handles, and it's it's a messy. So this. Oh, um, oh I think what he meant was not not to to draw by hand like like you showed us right now well what oh well, i think what he meant was using a pen tool and draw over the posterized results yeah perfectly possible yeah yeah, yeah. that would be a lot faster if, if you're good with the pen tool i think uh, you can have much more control or tracing over the posterized results yeah i mean like I said, there is no hard rule to right. to go by. You do what you feel comfortable with. But yeah. the main thing is to break the image you into the tones. Posterization. Once you got the posterization the way you want it, then yeah, yeah up up to you. How are you gonna get to to vector? And yeah. uh, some see some people prefer uh, do it uh, using the auto trace, and some people uses uh, the pen tool. Okay, yes. so that makes sense. Yes. yes. Great. That's that's. Uh, I think uh, the posterization has a, a, a very uh, bright future in our group because uh, I do see uh, <clears throat> uh, an advantage of having different tones created manually because you have much more control over software such as. Um, paint by number because paint by number you don't have control of how much um, how much you want in each layer right Leo show us that he start out with a, uh, a, a black layer and he can actually yeah. specify can how much black right? yeah. I don't you? think I don't think uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong uh, paint by number is not that flexible 
Um, I, I don't know. I haven't used it. I can't. But I'd like yeah. to see if no, I... Can you comment on that? That is, can you actually create six layers? You can. I know you can create six layers, but can you specify for each layer how much, yeah, like, like he's uh, showing us right now, how much you want in that layer? Well, this is different. It's not uh, post uh It's, you know. It's you a different technique. Okay. You have <clears throat> a panel and you can uh, change numbers and get, you know, many uh, small pieces. You can eliminate small pieces and you okay. can make it smoother or less smoother or, you know, lines and you can take the put the number of club uh, colors that you want okay. in, in it, but uh, you can't do what he's doing and make it, it it's yeah. going to work with layers. It works yeah, I mean, yeah, the it. thing is you decide where the line, you want, where you want the line to be. For instance, I like this, where the lips merge with the shadows here. That would be, and also look at it slightly I go one step ahead. I start to think about how am I, how am I going to cut it. So if mm -hmm. the lips are going to be one piece and that's going to be a big piece, obviously it's, there's going to be another piece on top. But you can decide because you can end up with some weird shapes that are difficult to cut. But this way you decide. Leo, can, can you please, while you add it, uh, adjust it so that the outline of the face, the chin, and yeah, a little more, a little more, so you can see all the the really outline a little more. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, there, 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 there. Okay, now you now you can see all the outline. Uh, so the black is not merging with the with her face. Yes. Okay, but then, but the black but then is what, not what you black. Have, black. What you is... have is on her left ear. There's yes. no definition there, though. the The outline of her face is is lost over there. Yeah, because we're dealing with this particular tone. On another tone, the detail is visible. Back. Okay. So you, I, I'm more about control, and you decide what your picture is going to look like. And at the end of the day, I think. This is a true likeness. I think you would recognize it easily. Um, it's about creating a likeness with a limited number of shades. And that's, in my definition, what, what, what posterization is about. I mean, when I used to do it with photography and with film, I um, used to mask things with paint and... Uh, and delete uh, things that I don't want to have. But here I can do it all. Um, and I have got flexibility where I want it, how I want it. I mean, the whites, I might not be happy with this. I go and delete it. So because that's going to be difficult to cut, for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's going. Maybe these can go as well. Uh, well, if you expose the others, but it comes to a point where it looks horrible, it looks like a skull, but then one click and we're there. Or oh, these blacks are probably going to be meaningless. So we can go to the blacks uh, session here delete these blacks, go to uh, so back to mm -hmm. um, brush black uh, gray and I'll just go and delete these so uh, yeah I, I'm deciding on the pieces I want Yeah. 
Yeah, you can then change the teeth to be white because you want them to be pro more prominent and the, the eye white here, the eye white here. You can do all these things, but you, you've got the bones of the picture. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're doing, I like to call it, we're doing, uh, instead of using, uh, doing it cutting by hand and with a pencil, you're using a, a, a mouse and a computer, but it's still going to take time. Uh, if you want it to happen uh, just instantly, I think uh, maybe artificial intelligence one day can do it. Oh, I'm sure it can do it. But oh, uh, not right now. <laughs> well, uh, I think uh, that's another yeah. that's another topic. Yeah, I don't see any AI that can actually uh, cre create the vectors. You have to create the vector yourself. You can create the image, but not the vector yeah. the way you want it. Yeah. Yeah. But this actually really uh, helpful for those of us that uh, cannot see the shades, various shades in a picture. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. You, you do need that, because we, yeah. we do need a limited number of shapes before we can cut the veneers. Yeah. And, and like uh, I said in the, the very beginning, there are at least three other ways in Photoshop to do exactly this. I chose this. the original. Yeah. Let's see the original image again of her. Uh, the, the, yeah. Oops, I'm gonna turn these off. Yeah, right here. Let, let's see, let's see if, if you can actually identify the shapes of all those uh, six layers. It's, it's very difficult. I, I'm not that authorization. Yeah. I'm, I'm a civil engineer and I would go by numbers. Yeah, uh, but uh, if you're an artist, you can probably, you can see it staring you straight in the face. Uh, but um, I can't see it. I'm more. Um, I need help. Yeah, but, but for artists, they they can actually convert this just tracing it. Uh, but for most of us, probably posterization is is a tool that helps you to identify various I mean, shadings. You, yeah, you do this. You go to um, adjustments. Um, there is. There's an automatic posterization somewhere here. Ah, okay. I'm, I'm on the wrong layer. Yeah, let's let's try that. Yeah. So, so if you go image and adjustments somewhere here, there is posterize, and it okay. uh, you can choose mm -hmm. how many colors you you can get. Mm -hmm. You see, it's created the colors. Okay. But okay. It might not be uh, cuttable. It might not be what you like. In this case, it looks quite good, actually. Yeah, but it doesn't split into layers like you did, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you can. Once you've got yeah. colors, you can then select each color and um, okay. and uh, se separate it. it it's How not do you a big deal. Like... Leo, how Sorry? do you limit the color with this automatic posterization? I'm sorry, can you say that uh, again? How do you, uh, let's say you select six color. Can, can you configure for six color auto, auto, automatically? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So if I go, uh, if I just do on control Z and it's actually. Go back, go back enough. Right, I'll just start, I'll delete this image um, and work on the original <laughs> on the background uh, duplicate that. I don't like to work on the original image. Um, so image, I'm on the right layer, image, adjustments, posterize. And I can choose to have two colors. So if I- do you choose the- Oh, I see. So you got level two color. Okay. Yeah. Six. And as you slide it, you're you're approaching a smooth picture. Leo, can you set it at six? I want to see how it compared to the way you did it. Yes, that's six. Okay. Okay. 
and the one I did was like that. Oops. You did six layer too, right? Yeah, I did six. I think so, the way you did it looks better. Yeah. You see, the lines are not where I chose them to be. I'm also going to have a thin line going down the chin here. Uh, the lips got funny. Uh, it's less control. I mean, that's the whole thing. Okay. Got it. Less control. I mean, Coral Draw can do the same. It's got a uh, a, uh, a um, posterize uh, oh, function. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. You can only but, do uh, your manual control in, in Photoshop. But to do it manually, you need to use the threshold. <clears throat> and um, threshold. sorry, I keep on clearing my throat. I have a cold. Uh, I Last night, I just felt terrible. But um, um, yeah, so um, it's it's to give you the... You need to like what you're doing. And you need to have also, I think you feel, you feel you've done something yourself rather than Coral Draw or Photoshop's okay. done okay. something for you. Right. I think it's yeah. very, very, uh, very useful for us learning this technique. Uh, um, I'm glad uh, that you like yeah. it. Yeah, other techniques also. Uh, we'll uh, we'll review other techniques, paint by numbers, and various other th techniques. Uh, maybe uh, a drawing by hand, uh, a tracing by hand using um, yeah. the pen tool. Well, we do that. Yeah. Uh, maybe yeah. uh, in, injecting in some very simple project that we can do, and take it to the final product. And uh, Mark Strick uh, is thinking about <clears throat> that aspects of. Uh, Getting our group to uh, to start doing something simple um, and take it to the, the end product. Anyway, thank you, Leo. Fantastic, fantastic. I learned a lot today. Uh, thank you very much.